now, without further ado, I have the distinguished honor and privilege of presenting to you the Queen of Color, the mother of artists, globally acclaimed, award-winning master acrylic artist, and the star of our show, Ginger Cook, as she once again mesmerizes her audience with the daring do's and don'ts of painting with acrylic. John, hi everybody. Just welcome to our Tuesday night Paint with Ginger show. I hope you guys Paint are... Paint with Ginger show. Isn't that what we call you? The Paint with Ginger show. Well, I don't know. It sounds like a good name to me. <laughs> hey, you know, that, that works. Hey. Yeah, well, I mean, you're here to paint something. We're going to be painting a really pretty uh, early autumn snow scene. I thought it would be really fun to do. Some people may be we're getting close to September and not too far away, about a week away from September, and for some parts of the world, uh, the leaves are starting to turn, not always, but some places. So just kind of, you know, getting in the mood for fall, that kind of stuff. Kids are going to go back to school after Labor Day, a lot of them, and some are going next week. In Houston, they go back about a week early. Yeah, they're very started. I saw the kids coming home on a bus. Yeah, they, some of them start, just some school districts start. I know my grandkids are going back next week. So, you know, this is all kind of ex exciting stuff, and uh, I thought wait, maybe we would do something fun. We've got a really good show tonight, and want to thank um, our moderators. Uh, Wendy uh, is here, and these guys are volunteers. They really help our live shows go along, and probably Kinsung and uh, Tonya, the, all Tonya those guys. Tonya and Bonnie. Bonnie's on um, tonight, Oh, too. hi, Bonnie. So, uh, listen, you guys, thanks very much. We're glad you could you know, make it, and you know, uh, what the moderators do is that when you guys have questions, when we get a lot of people on a live show, it, you know, to define a lot of people, anything over 100 is a lot of people, everybody has questions, and if you will type your questions in in capital letters, uh, our moderators will try to see that we get them, John tried, sometimes the chat goes by so fast, we also have something called um, Super Chat. So if you really had a burning question and you wanted an answer, you can you can go to the super chat, and I think that donations are anywhere from you know a buck to whatever. And you know, but your questions are heard, not that you could just out of the bottom of your generous heart, to, you know, to, you know, donate to, and that's fine, and we appreciate it. Uh, we're we are non-sponsored. We are a non-sponsored acrylic show. Nobody's sponsoring us. We're, we bring you these lessons because we love you and we are showing you how to paint with acrylics and we give you our honest opinion on things because nobody gives us anything, okay? Apparently so, your, your mouth is not matching the video at the moment. Interesting, so we're not in sync. You're not in sync, but that, I don't know how, you know, it's gonna be distracting only when you're big. Well, why don't we just zoom back down to and the- I was gonna say, let's just let's, shrink let's you just down. Let's just get right on down to, the, um, to, what to our table, what we're gonna be doing. This is what we're gonna be painting tonight. We'll uh, an eight by so. ten canvas, okay, and you know, which should be a lot of fun. I think this is a, a very easy. We're going to take this step by step. We're going to do it. We're going to see if we can't, you know, get this done fairly quickly. We know we've got a. We're usually good for live feed for about an hour and fifteen minutes, and after that, it's anybody's bet if we still hang on to that. We're not sure why the deal is. We've got a call into our channel manager. Um, it's easy to blame it on our. Um, our internet service, but who knows? But in any event, well, the first thing we're going to do is take some light sandpaper and sand this. And incidentally, we have noticed that about half the people that watch our channel have not subscribed. And we are just a few subscribers away from uh, 40,000, by the way. And incidentally, I want to give a big shout out to my daughter, Cinnamon the Art Chirper. She just did 200,000 subscribers, which is huge. One of the biggest art channel out there now. We really appreciate that. So we're really glad you guys are subscribing to her too. But we certainly would appreciate you guys if you would hit the subscribe button and hit that bell underneath so that you are aware when we're going live. And while I'm telling you that, I'm, you see how I'm just uh, lightly sanding the canvas. And then I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to spray the back with water because what I want to have happen, I want to drum. Hear this sort of thump, thump? Well, if I spray it with water, what happens is that this is cotton, and we shrink the canvas, and you really want to shrink it um, at do hot water and hit it with a hair dryer, but you're going to shrink it, 
and what this will do is tighten it up. It just makes a nicer surface for you to paint on. It's a lot easier to paint on it when you remember to do this. It's just one of those things. Let me see if I can show you now. Here, hear the drum? Yeah, doom, ba -doom, doom, boom. All right, so that's what we're doing now. And the colors, while I'm putting out the colors, I want to just say if you didn't catch last night's show, this is what we did last night. Isn't she beautiful? You know, just wonderful cat. We did that step by step. And um, we think that's really kind of cool. The first thing I'm going to, before I put out all the colors, I think I'm just going to put out phthalo blue, ultramarine, that's ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, and white. And we're going to put in our underpainting, and then I'll put out the rest of the colors, and we'll get that going. I didn't do that ahead of time. How many cookies would you classify this? Is it one cookie? Yeah, it's a one cookie lesson. This is really simple. This is a really simple, This easy is a good lesson. introduction to colors and blending. And, and trees. You know, the biggest thing, I see people that can paint really well, and it comes to trees, and they just... <laughs> I don't blow it. Is that the word I want to use? Yeah, I mean, I just, I'm trying to... I'm just, I tell you what, there's a tree rule. There's a tree rule. The tree rule is trees are either like telephone poles all the way up or they're wider at the bottom and they go up. But honestly, they don't swallow elephants in the middle and come up and do this, you know, <laughs> like they're pregnant in the middle. And I see people do the strangest looking trees, like somebody squeezed them or something. With I don't know what they did. I like that one. So, so. I'm going to just put my picture up here where I can see it. Now, I'm using a large brush. Oh, this wait. I don't have their picture in picture yet. So you go right ahead. I'm doing a large brush. This is a number 12 uh, ruby satin silver brush. All That's right. one of my favorites. And um, it's a nice wide brush. And we're going to start with a little white paint. Start with that first little phthalo blue, little ultramarine blue kind of, kind of combination. And going back and forth across the canvas. The brush was damp, but not real wet. All right. Now we're going to get, you'll notice I got about that far and then I'm overlapping and all the way across. Now, let's see, a little tiny bit of water on the tip of the brush. Let's mix some more paint because we're sort of out, right? Now, here we go. And we're just going to, we're just going to get a background color. This is our, going to be kind of that undertone for the whole picture. And what you want to do when you're doing this is overlap. What, what that means is this is not overlapping. This is where you catch part of the wet edge and keep on coming down. All right, that, that's just the easiest way I know to do it. I'm just turn this around like this and uh, get off of there. What are you? A feather. Oh, where the feather came in from? Okay, so see how I'm going to just come up here and do that. And then what we're going to do is just dry it. So that's a, this is sort of a medium tone blue. If somebody had cerulean blue, that would be a pretty blue too. It would be a nice blue if you didn't have these. But I always use ultramarine blue a red shade and phthalo blue green shade if you're using Liquitex. Otherwise, it's just phthalo blue and ultramarine <laughs> blue. It's pretty much the colors. Now, there's a lot of paint left on the brush. And if you were going to, at that point, uh, paint the edges, then you just wet, wet the tip like this. Just wet the tip of the brush to kind of clean it out on the sides. You know, otherwise, you're just kind of pouring it down the drain when you clean the brush. But anyway, that's, that's, you don't do the sides at first. I see, used to see that at painting parties. People would start to paint their sides, particularly with skies, particularly when you want a particular color. If you start painting the sides first, then you might not have the right color to go all the way across on a very large painting. So while I'm drawing this, maybe John has some, you know, stuff he can share with you guys. All right, can you do that, John? Maybe who knows? Who knows what will come to my brain? All right, but we anyway we appreciate you guys. Give everybody a chance to joining us. For those of did you put the picture in a picture, John? Everybody I did. They have our picture. We, we have our picture. Everybody knows that we're painting that, right? Yep. Everybody knows it's on the website. Okay. All, All right. right. All right. Okay. I've muted her. <laughs> Bye. All right. So if you don't know, we do have the traceable or a reference photo on our website. It's on the home page. Also, in the description of this video, you will find the um, you'll find the link to it to our website, gingercooklive.gallery. Hey, I want to thank everybody who participated in the auction. Uh, the first batch of paintings have gone out. We have half of them have been shipped. They got notified via email. I got confirmation from Judy that that part is working. Uh, the Tech Bear, Sammy, has got his official channel. So if you do The Tech Bear, where it says Ginger Cook Live, if you put The Tech Bear, you'll get to his uh, channel on YouTube. And he did a video on how to box up artwork ready for shipping. Talk again, I've moved your switch. 
Oh, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, that is the neatest it. video, you guys, of how to how to package up your artwork to sell. You know, to send it out to somebody. Maybe you want to send something to your mom or. You know, a friend or you sold something and you want to make sure they get the painting. John's got the video for it. And Sammy, our tech bear, has got his own channel now. And he's going to be putting up those videos, you know, on how to use your cell phone and watch the stuff. And, you know, he's got all these little technical things related to artists who are trying to use their tech to do their art stuff. You know, everything from how to make the fire sticks work on TV. I don't know if he's got that one yet. But these are things that are coming. So, all right, so we've got, this is our picture. I'm going to bring mine down about like this so I can kind of see where I am. And I want to come up here. I think that's about four fingers like that. I know this bothers John, this four fingers. And I want to come over here about five on this side. All right, it's about five. And I'm just going to say that I've got a little line going like that. And I think I'll use a little wider piece of chalk uh, for this so that we can see it. Here we go. Let's see what... What line was that, anyway? Oh, that was this one. <laughs> okay, good. Good to know, right? Oh. So that's this one. I'm coming here like this, and then I'm going to come down about two, about this far, and do like a little arrow here, kind of a zigzaggy thing. Do I have a better piece of chalk than that? I thought we had some white. I gave you a whole box of brand Well, new I'm going to use brand. I'm going to use this brown one because nobody can see this light stuff. Here you go. Something like this, all right? Kind of zigzag it back along here. And then I'm going to come up about two fingers and then come about as far, not quite as far as this, maybe about four, come up and then just come across here like that again. So again, this is a zigzaggy kind of thing like this. Now, one of the things I noticed uh, in this painting when I was looking at it, this almost looked like a lake back here to me, doesn't it? Kind of, that was like supposed to be an accident of the sky. That was one of those Bob Ross's happy little accidents, right? But I like that, you know? So I thought, what if we said, because we know we're going to have some sort of, um, let me just put this in here now. We're going to have some sort of, um, you know, bushes that are coming along in the back here. But what if we said back here, we have something light like that, and then maybe a little sort of peninsula. I thought there was a far distant lake back here and maybe some clouds up here. So anyway, that was my thought, because I really like how that looked. And again, that was one of, not intended, but sometimes, you know, things inspire you. So let's see. Let's find a smaller brush now. Here's a um, number eight. This is a, a number eight bright brush. And I'm going to just go ahead and get some white paint. And one of the colors I want to put out now is burnt umber. A little bit of that. Just put, let's, would like to get more out than this, though, please. All right, a little bit of burnt umber into the brown into the blue, into the brown, like that. Okay, a little bit like that. Put a little bit more thalo blue with it, a little more white. Okay, I'm going to make this sort of pale color back here. And I want to come back here like this. And um, a little bit more white, maybe a little ultramarine with that. It's not quite the color yet. All right, here we go. Just back up here like this. I'm going to come across here and suggest that that's this sort of light area that I saw. And where's our purple? I think that almost feels like there could be a purple cast to this. So I'm going to put a little purple out. We'll just start putting colors out as we need it. Tiny bit of purple, like a drop of that. And I'm going to come above here. Let's see, a little bit of the purple, blue color. I want to come above here like that and just suggest that there might be, um, let's see, a little more ultramarine blue, maybe. Um, there might be a little hill back here. You know, just something that's way back in the distance that we barely see, which I kind of like. And then, um, I, kind of, I think that's kind of cool. And then let's take a, I'll rinse the brush and just using white paint, we're going to do some real simple clouds. See, the kind of white paint on the brush here like that. I'm going to come across here like this and just, you now. Just going to just push some clouds back here. Now a little water on the brush, wipe it off, and we're just going to make them a little more translucent by doing this. Just come across here like that. Nothing too scary. There we go, down here onto our peninsula. Okay. Maybe we'll have a little bit of that white in the lake too. I think I want a little bit, I want that little bit light blue, a little there, a little bit, maybe, maybe thalo and white. I'm going to get the color of that. There we go. 
down in here. We're going to say that happened here. We won't really see that side, all right? So again, we're not trying to do fancy clouds. We're just suggesting there might be some clouds up there. And then as we come into here, this is our, let's take a little ultramarine blue and a little purple and a little bit of burnt umber, a little bit of a dark color, and just rinse all the white off your brush before you do this. So let's just come in here like this and suggest that this is our dark um, part of our water. Look how neat, look at how interestingly fast this is going to paint for you. I want more, more blue and less brown. Okay. And it's a little bit ultramarine blue, a little bit of purple, a little bit of, let's try some phthalo. Not getting it blue enough. Okay, so I'm going to say here like this, this is our water coming up like that. And if you start to see yourself running out of paint, do you see how the brush wasn't painting anymore? You want this edge to be a little zigzaggy, okay? And then as long as I'm doing that, I want to come around here like this edge here with a dark little bit of an edge. Okay. And uh, maybe come out this way a little bit. Just keep it zigzagging. As long as you keep it zigzagging, you're going to be fine. All right. So this is what we've got so far. And it's a little wider than we need it, but that just doesn't matter. That's fine. As long as we've got the dark right here, that's just what we want. All that pretty dark in here. Okay. And so you're going, yeah, okay, then what? Well, just wipe, don't rinse, just wipe your brush off. Take some white, okay? Now, come along here like this. Barely touch this. And because your brush is slightly dirty, it's going to be not quite white anymore. And plus, you're going into some of these little bits of dark areas. You're kind of making them a little thinner. And we're going to put some snow in here like this. Okay, a little bit of white. There we go. Coming along, a little bit more white on the brush. Keep it zigzagging. All right. So far, so good. Now, the direction of your brush strokes makes a big difference. It really does, so you want to keep them level. Don't go up, up and down, because otherwise it won't look like a lake. And then I'll take a little bit of phthalo blue, barely touch this, and come over here and stain some of the snow like that. Just come in here. Just yeah, a little bit of that color, just a little bit here and there. Okay, and I can always add more white later, but already you can see we've got snow, right? So now what, the best thing for all of this is to have it dry, okay? So while that's drying, I'm going to show you something. It'll just take a minute. When that's showing, I'm going to show you guys some stuff. Again, last night, if you missed our class last night, this is what we did with the cat, step by step, nine by twelve on the cat. Now, and also we, last night's episode, we got interrupted a few times, so we have a full uncut version on our website. Yeah, if you wanted to see exactly how we did the whiskers and everything, but you know, but we we have the uncut version on our website. But it, we got it right up to the whiskers, and um, and we kept filming. All right. So and then I th and then it kind of there's kind of skips. If you watch the video, there's a place where I stop, and then it just jump the far ahead because then it finally finishes the video. You only lost about two minutes of that. Uh, right, and it was then, right when she was doing the whiskers. <laughs> just, yeah, and then this one we did last week. If you haven't had a chance to paint this uh, balcony scene, this is our Tuscan balcony. This looks hard. It's not. I have seen the most wonderful uh, got a crack, Rob, wonderful ones. Robin did one, sent one us to it. Go to our Pinterest board, Ginger Cook Live on Pinterest 2017 student student uh, gallery because I put a lot of your stuff up there. You can see your stuff if you haven't looked. If you've sent it to me, and particularly if you're a member of our academy and you want your artwork on Pinterest, if it's one of our lessons, we for sure put it up. And anyway, there it is. That's that. That's I wanted you to see that while we're waiting for this to dry. And then every week our members get every week our members get a brand new uh, lesson. Of, uh, when we're talking about members, we're talking about those who are subscribe to our Academy of Fine Art and Acrylic Painting. Every week we have a, a, a new lesson. Some are very, very introductory beginner acrylics going up to very, very complicated lessons. There's some of them are like three, four hours long. And it's, I mean, it's a great thing and it comes with personal art coaching. Last week we did the chair. This is the, the that was a Van Gogh's chair. And so that was the lesson for last week. And it was a really excellent lesson on how to draw a chair. And I'm happy to tell you guys uh, this week, we're doing this desert one. 
How cool is that? That's this wonderful cactus one with all these purple mountains and stuff in this path. I thought that was really pretty. I, and we've had some, we've got some folks from Arizona who kind of asked for stuff like that. So this is our desert one. That's for our members coming up in this week. This week, coming up this week. That'll be the Thursday release. We wanted to share that with you. Good, good to know. And I think we're not quite dry. Again, so, I'm going to just. Did you just put a dark fingerprint on it? Did I? Yes. Here. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> it sure did. Yeah, uh, all right. Well, I'm going to dry it because, again, even after those marvelous words, I have to dry it for just a second, John. Please entertain everyone. For <laughs> a second, thank you. You're muted. All right. While well, she's doing that, um, don't know what else I got for you. Okay, you know, Sam is going to, we just shot that video today on the packing the art. We'll have to edit that and get that up. Uh, the rest of the auction pieces, hopefully will go out tomorrow. And thank you to everyone that participated in our August Find the Word giveaway uh, where Judith won the painting. Do you have and the painting she won, John, or we mailed it's it? Ma it's gone, baby. We mailed it. We mailed <laughs> it. It's we, gone. The, you know, we also had an art auction last month, and John got at least half of the paintings out and mailed today. Very exciting stuff. So good, good, good job, Judith. I'm glad, so glad you won that. What's this? We don't know. All right, so uh, mo mo moving on. Let's see. We're going to change brushes now and get into a, a smaller brush. So what was that a, first one you had? Was a, what was that, an 8? That, that was that. The first one I did was a, was the... You the, did a 12 on the back. 12 and then, a, then an 8. Okay, 12 and then, eight. An 8. Because I got to take the website could, to match this, what This doing. really, when we dried it, didn't show up very well, did it? So I'm going to just do this again. Acrylics normally dry darker, but, you know, this... I think this could be slightly darker in here, back here. I'm just going to... In here, back here. I just here. want a little bit of a contrast back here. Okay, just just felt like we needed that. Just felt like we did. You know, never know. You never know, but yeah, I do. That's what I wanted. Okay, so moving on to this. This is a little uh, three eighths inch uh, ruby satin silver short handled brush, and we're going to use that because we're going to put in some of the background trees. Now we're getting down to pine trees. Um, if you've ever had the fun of going Christmas shopping for a live pine tree, when you go to one of those lots, they, they come in different prices depending on the height and the kind of the tree. So certain trees are more expensive than others. Um, not sure really why, but probably <laughs> supply and demand, because but they're all long, different. How long they're living, you know, so, with the so, Well, height and also the type of tree, okay? So basically, if you imagine you've got a pine tree like this, okay, these pine trees... Sometimes I'll do a pine tree and I'll do them like this, all right? You've seen me do this tree, right? I'll kind of, there's a pine tree. Like that, and there's our pine tree, okay? But we're going to do a different one today. We're going to do a pine tree like this, and we're going to say that the branches are going more upwards. Ooh. We're going to change it up a little bit. You wild no pun and crazy intended. Person. Yeah, so we're going to say that they're not, they're, it's not a perfect tree. It's not going to be a, it's not Christmas tree um, material. How's that, right? You know, did you know, like in the National Forest, they'll go, they'll send uh, loggers in to just cut the tips of a tree off for Christmas tree? Because it's hard to find a really good tree. Tree farms really work and prune at these things to get a really good looking tree. So you see how the branches are going up as opposed to down. Different ways to paint a tree. That's what we're going to do for this one. Okay? Well, we'd like to thank Anne Marie for the, don the donation. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it very much. Thank you very much. All right, so we're going to do a dark green color and we talk about this before but I'm going to pretend like you never you're new to the channel you don't know what I'm talking about and, <laughs> and you never heard this I so we're going to tell you even if you've heard it a thousand times it doesn't hurt um, we want a dark green and so because the dark green if it were a black and white uh, picture would fall on this side of the grayscale if we turned it into a black and white picture we're going to start with the darkest color which is going to be blue not yellow everybody wants to start with yellow well that's how you waste paint people always say you know I don't understand I can't afford your academy because it's too expensive. For one thing, our academy is practically free. It's $9.95 for a full week. Uh, tw you know, what is it, $26.95 for a month with personal art coaching. It's not even the cost of two tubes of paint. But where you, where you lose it is that when you waste paint. This is when painting gets expensive. When you mix all the wrong colors and make batch, going through paint like a crazy person because you're mixing the colors wrong. It's just where you want to economize. Not on your education, but that's okay. We're going to start with phthalo blue and a tiny bit of yellow, and we're going to mix it like that, make a dark green. I'll add a drop of purple. Now, that is a nice green. If I need a little bit greener, 
There we go. There's a nice dark Christmas tree green. And I want to come up about, um, I'm going to come over what about what? I'm going to just say three fingers coming up like this. I want it over the top of this. And now you see how we're just going to use the angle brush to make the, um, the, the, uh, the, what do they call these bows? Okay, there it is. Angle brush makes the bows. And let's just, let's just bring that up a little, even a little bit more. You say bows, I would say bows. 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 Bows are is things you put in your hair. No, John, did, did you not celebrate Christmas? We it's did, just, but we called it a bow. It's a bow. How are you spelling it? B-O-W. How do you spell bow? bow? <laughs> B-O-W. I, and so, who's right? Me. Me? Uh, no. I'm always right. Ask the ask okay, our what do friends. Okay, what do you call that little stick you play with a, a violin? Isn't that a bow? That's a bow, too. That's a bow, too. But, well, you know, I, I'm sorry that you're confused about these things. I, I, I No, I don't feel like Well, anyways, uh, uh, Jennifer has a question. Sure. <laughs> Did you go to school to learn art? Well, you know, Jennifer, it's a funny thing. It's been my experience that going to school to learn art is practically a waste of time. You learn a lot of history of art, and yes, I did in some cases. The, but basically, where I learned it, you know, what I learned was um, I took classes from various instructors over the years, you know, different artists. I'd take workshops, and I went to college and learned a little bit of basic design. But where you really learn, to, uh, you're learning more from me in a few months than I learned in 30 years practically from anybody else you just I'm telling you what I, 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 I can't the reason one of the reasons I do is I know people just aren't being told the deal here that then people just get the funniest um you are I remember t for instance when I was in college my professor said uh, I, I was taking a sculpture class and the first thing he did was uh, we had a slideshow. We went and saw the Tripoli fountain, you know, that fountain, that fancy fountain in Italy, and we saw the, you know, great sculptures from around the planet. Okay, this is a bigger one here. Okay, big, beautiful sculptures. I think I want this one. Hey, we'd like to say uh, thank you to Sissix Jobs for the donation. Oh, thank you so much. And they've, they've chimed in. Most of them would think that you are right, but the proper spelling is B O U G H. Bow, that's right, bow. It's a bow. Now it's a bow? Yeah. It's not a bow. No, it's a bow. <laughs> it's bow. Bow. It's but, bow. But it's a bow. you spell it B-O-U-G-A. B-O-U-G-A. There you go. See, I knew, I knew we had someone out there that knew. Well, anyway, so I'm telling you about my experience in like school. It sounds like wow. I'm bow, telling bow. you, yeah, I'm telling you about my, uh, my experience in school here in school. So I'm, I'm in college. I'm 17 years old. And I'm um, um, all excited to take this art, you know, this sculpture class. And we go, we see a slideshow. All these great sculptures. I mean, I mean, I'm talking about you know big deal things, right? I mean, bigger than anything anybody. A slideshow. Now, you know, most of the people can understand what that is. Well, they don't know what the, uh, what the no, art. No, sure they do. Yeah, and our so, audience will. Yeah, so we saw the slideshow, and then you know, it, you know, all right. So then, okay, so let's um, let me put some color out. While I'm telling you this. So then, let's see. I want some cad red medium. So then we. Um, um, uh, went back to the. Um, the, this class the next day and there was a big workshop full of tools he said make something now you know this is like being shown pictures of the Taj Mahal and you're at the level if you got a clever birdhouse you'd be hopping up and down happy Do you know what I mean and, and but all you saw was the Taj Mahal and then you're thinking man this isn't going anywhere fast you know <laughs> uh, just it was just crazy I mean I just thought that was the craziest waste of my time ever right uh, that that sculpture class and then let's see um my art design class was even nutsier i i took five art classes the first year in my first semester in college i took like five art classes and like one of them let's see the watercolor class uh, there was no instruction in any of these. It was extraordinary. Well, I found that to be, when I did graphic arts, there was no instructions. Yeah, it was just extraordinary. It was just, it was so distressing. Okay, I'm going to put out a little burnt sienna, too. So, it was so distressing. And, um, let me open this up. Yeah. So, anyway, the, the, in the sculpture, in the watercolor class, they, um, they basically wanted, instead of a slideshow, they had an exhibit downtown in Phoenix. So, I was at Arizona State University. And they went down in um, Phoenix and... 
we had to get down there somehow. You know, at that age, at 17, even though I went to college kind of early, I wasn't going to ask anybody for a ride. No way. I, just, I, I had no idea how to get down there. It just, that was beyond me. I don't have, there was no bus system, you know, <laughs> and from the school down there, and I had no idea how to get there. I dropped that watercolor class and, and got all upset with them because I couldn't figure out. Had, had you doing stuff and couldn't get, get there. You know, an older kid might have asked someone else for a ride, but I wasn't <laughs> asking anybody for a ride. I didn't know any of those people. All right, so we're going to put some sort of a dead tree back here. Maybe it's a pine tree or whatever it is. So it's a little bit more brown with it. A little burnt sienna. We're going to say there's some sort of little dead wood thing back here and over here, too. We've got some sort of little dead bushy thing here. Okay? Like that, that's a dead, little dead tree. Maybe something over here too. Some sort of little dead tree. That's back over in here. Like that. All right, that sounds good. This is. I'm trying to think of where we do it to, to, to not have to. Um, you know, dry everything first. Okay, so you can kind of see now. I want to do a little bit of um. Uh, just a little bit of a highlight. This is a closer pine tree, so I'm going to add a little more yellow to that green and just a touch of burnt sienna, kind of tone that down in a little yellow. Why does, why does red tone down green? It's because it's opposite, again, red is opposite green on the color wheel. And so anytime if you need to tone down green, if you have a little brown or red, that does tone it down. So we're just going to say that in here like this, just tapping it on this side, I'm going to say that there might be a little lighter green. And then even in here, maybe here on this one, I might just say there's a little lighter green somewhere and maybe something in here like that. Some sort of either lighter green or some sort of green bushes that are kind of peeking their way here. It could be any of those, all or any of the above. All right, some sort of something like that before I have to dry it, okay? So that does look like a little lake back there now, doesn't it? Kind of way back in there, kind of like a peninsula or, you know, something like that. Maybe the Great Lakes. You were from Michigan, John. Does that look more like the Great Lakes? Uh, no, that looks like one of the many lakes we have in Michigan. Oh, many lakes. Okay, land of a thousand lakes. No, that's Minnesota. But we do have them. And you, you are within a half mile of water everywhere you stand in the state wow. of Michigan. Really? Within a half mile. Well, all right. So I'm giving that another little coat of dark here. And maybe I'll put a little bit of dark over in here, too. So we're going to put some dark back this way. As long as we're playing, we have to dry. But that, yes, yeah, so kind of, and then one of the best things I ever did was when I was, I got, um, when Cinnamon was a baby, I took, a, you know, they used to have this contest on the back of matches, you know, can you draw this kind of thing? And I oh, sent I one of those, those in, remember those? Yeah. Can you, and um, I actually took that, that, that I, I actually did that art school for about uh, two years, uh, home school for Massman. You know, as adult, an adult, I took that and I learned a lot. That was really, I learned a lot from them. That was a really, really um, very helpful class. And, and, they, and you did get personal art coaching with them. You could you would send your art in and an instructor would put a piece of tracing paper over what you did and write comments. Oh, and you'd no, get graded. And it was, you really learned a lot. And they, they had very good, good lessons. It. And uh, I think I still have some of those lessons. I think I still have some of those books. I don't think That'd I threw them out. Cool. Um, and, and that was really, really good. That, that was, and you learned at your own pace and as you sent it in. And, um, anyway, that was kind of cool. So I'm going to draw. And then over the years, I would buy all art books I could find. Anybody wrote an art book, I'd buy it and read it too. You know? So you're basically self-taught. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Okay. All uh, right. Apparently you're going to dry again. Yeah, drying. See, that's the hair dryer. See, this is... <laughs> Aha, I'm drying. Okay. Watch out. Okay, here we go. No go for talking. it. All right, while she dries, we'll see what's going on with the rest of the world. Neither side didn't get anybody's work up. I was busy shipping today. Thinking what else we got coming up. Um, website is going through some changes. We're going to be updating everything to the newer style lessons. And it's, gonna, it's a long process. It takes about an hour per lesson to convert it over. And with 300 lessons, you can do the math. And so that's going to be going on. And she's back. Okay, so um, because we're going to go into our oranges with our... Let's take a little bit of Cad Red Medium now. And maybe a little Dosning Purple. 
and make this sort of dark reddish brown color, kind of like that. Let's see, the cad red medium? I think it was, wasn't it? That's what that says. All right, let's try a little yellow with that. A little tiny purple, bit of purple. Oh, there we go. First thing we're going to do is we're going to dot along here like this, and we're going to suggest that the leaves are turning on our little world here. There's not too much. We don't want to lose all our pine trees. We might come up into some of them. That's why we had to dry it, because... Um, um, you know, red and green. If you don't want muddy colors, you've got to dry wet green if you're going to put red over it, all right? It's going to come down here like this, maybe a little lower in here. want a little more yellow, so I want a little bit more orange. I'm going to just come up here like that, little dots of color. Maybe come along here, Let's say that there's some orange color right in here. Okay. You've got different uh, different colors of of orange on your brush depending on the fact that we haven't dried this red. I'm going to come down here like that and just suggest that the, whatever these little bushes are, they've turned. And this doesn't take a long time to paint. It's just I can just take pure yellow up here right on top of some of these and just say, ooh, that's too much yellow. Let's take a little red with that. Little tiny dots of color. Kind of just pushing these back. I'm going to come down a little bit more forward and bring this island down a little bit. There's like a little island here. Keep this level with the corner, sharp corners. Otherwise, it's going to look weird. All right, so I'm going to say that there's our, our um, kind of fall foliage. And then I'll just take a little tiny bit. The more you tap the yellow into the wet, you're going to, it's going to change it. So we're just going to, using just the tiny corner of this brush, We'll just tap in some lighter yellow in a couple places. We want to come in front of this tree for sure. Let's say that there's some bright oranges up in here like this. Maybe something behind here like that. So we're kind of pushing these trees back like that. And if you made this bigger, this would be very nice bigger. This would be a very pretty painting, I think, bigger. You can just, but it doesn't take you, this does not take a lot to do this. You're just kind of moving along and as long as we're doing that let's take a little bit of this orange color and put it sideways. Now it's almost like it might be reflecting into our water here like that. And Anne Marie is asking a question. Stop right there Ginger. Yeah. The yellows are so bright onto the red. Why? Uh, well, because it's there, because that's what fall is very very bright. Okay. Yeah, but I think she's asking, how did you get it to do it? Well, you're I not just, mixing. You're just you're no, I'm the color. I'm dropping them on like this. I'm just taking taking a little glob of paint on the corner of the brush, see that, and just depositing it, making these little dots, like you're just that. Plopping them in there. Yeah, just plopping them in there and saying that that's a little yellow bush, you know, that's a little brighter bush. Maybe up into here too. I want this bush a little brighter. I want that a little bit brighter up this way. I think it'll be a tree here, but let's just say I did, right? I want something up here like that. Okay. So we've got these bushes now. Again, this is one of those things where where drying doesn't hurt because I've got to go over this. I'm not going to dry it, but I'm going to suggest you dry it. How's that? Does that make sense? I'm not going to dry it. I'm going to just take some burnt umber and purple. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to say I want a tree right here. Let's see, I'm just going to move it over. I want a tree right, don't want to lose this tree. So it's got to be right in front of um, this one, all right? And it's going to come up. I'll put a dot here in a couple places where I know I'm going to put it. Otherwise, you might just draw it in. All right, so there's this tree like that. See, there, and if you... This is why I say I would, I would tell you to dry it only because this is just purple and burnt umber. And it might be easier for some of you to do it sideways. You know, some, it, decide if it's easier to do that than it would be to um, uh, decide, then go up and down. For some people it is. Now we want a little bit wider on the trunk, so we're going to start widening, widening the trunk and then just, let's see, a little bit of water on the brush because it's dragging. Okay, like that. A little bit of water, just a touch. Thinner at the top. Okay, like that. So there's that tree. Now I've got one that I want right same place here, and I want it to come up to about here. 
and it's going to curve a bit like that. And I'm using just the knife blade of my br brush. We've got a really great video called Can Your Brush Do That? And can you make these uh, angles? Now the fatter, harder you push on a brush, the fatter the line. Okay, so this is, this is good practice. If you want to just know what to practice, practice doing stuff like this where you just can make it real thick and thin lines. This is a good thing to practice. Okay, so there's a tree right there. Okay, now we're going to come over here, the same thing, and I'm going to say this tree is coming up this way, and it's just going to curve. I'm going to bring it up. I hate to lose this tree. I'm going to get it up closer to this tree then. Just change my mind about where this is going. Okay, because I don't want to lose that little... It depends on where you put your pine trees, where you stick these, okay? I don't want to, I want to paint over the pine tree. But I might just say it came up like this and then just came that way, kind of forked up at the top. There we go. All right, so these two trees are together. I'm going to say this tree right here is branching off here. Just like people, trees have shoulders, usually wider where it leaves the tree and then gets thinner. When you're out driving around, take a look at trees, see what I'm talking about. Okay. And maybe I've got another branch. This way. Got a question um, from Jennifer. Okay. And gloss mm. medium and varnish from Liquitex, a good medium for normal glazing. Um, glass medium and varnish. I prefer glazing medium. You can use it. Okay. It dry so quicker, I would think. Yeah, you can. I prefer glazing medium. It's it's that's what it's designed to do. But you can use it in a pinch. All right. So over here, we've got another tree here. This is going to end up here. It's going to kind of come like that. So we're going to just come down here like this and just push harder as we get here. Use the, all right, so here's this tree coming this way. You don't, um, here's an interesting thing. Design-wise, your eye, we're, we're all, our eyes are all taught to follow lines. So you don't want a tree that's just going to take your eye off the canvas. You've got to really watch the direction of, of your trees. It can... That, that makes a big difference. Okay, so I'm going to say that there's another part of this tree that's wiggling up like this, coming up this way. Maybe doing that. It's a little bit wider right here. And at this point, I'll rinse my brush, wipe it off, make sure I have my... Um, um, and I'm going to just kind of make the trunk go in here like that. Then I want another one that's coming this way, I want to avoid that pine tree. Okay, like that, maybe coming back this way. All right, flat brush. There we go. Cool, right? Sherry's asking a question. Did, did, Ginger, did Ginger talk about her friend Jack White tonight yet? Oh gosh, I know I haven't talked about my friend Jack White. You know, I, I was found out from one of you guys that he'd actually passed away a couple of years ago. Jack White was the first Texas artist. And uh, he, he married a gal named Mickey Sincar. She's a wonderful artist. And I met Jack through his book. It was called The Mystery of Making It, about, about 1989, 90, I think I read it. And it was called The Mystery of Making It. And he really explained how... I'm going to do a little tiny tree right here. Uh, how as an artist you want to do it, put on an art show, how to sell art. I mean, he, he, I think I'm a very good marketer. John will tell you that I'm an excellent marketer of artwork. Okay? She's an excellent marketer of artwork. But I, I just can't, couldn't hand a candle to John, to Jack. Though I have to tell you a funny story. I actually have an, you know, some art books. We have to, they've gone out of print. We have to republish them. But, you know, they're like picture books with, with stuff. I've got some really nice ones. <laughs> All right? Picture books with stuff. Well, you know, they're, art, they're pictures of our paintings, okay? <laughs> pictures of my paintings. You've seen artist books, you know, like that, art books, and they're like 100 bucks or something. Right. Well, you know, when you publish an art book, you've, um, it's expensive. The reason that most artists don't have them, their publisher does it for them, because... Um, it's hundreds of, you know, it's a good 10 grand to make an art book. Guess what? I mean, it's expensive. And Jack and his wife, now how Jack did it was, this was very, very clever. I'll give him that. How Jack did it was he pre-sold them. 
he had those books all sold and um before anybody ever bought anything, I mean, you know, I mean, there was, you know, then he'd get them made, right? Now, the problem with the book like that, what Jack was making, and this is, you know, you know, I, I had this conversation with him. So the problem with that, Jack, is that you're stuck with whatever art you've got up to that point. So if you do another really neat painting and it would have been great in that book, and going in because they've already got the books, right? They've already got them. So there's no point. You're not adding any more, right? It's a little bit of dark here by our uh, back here like this, a little bit of dark under here. Everybody, this is kind of looking cool, isn't it? Why, aren't you guys amazed at how cool something like this, how neat it looks so fast? All right, so, um, so anyway, I, I, at that particular time, I was able to find uh, <laughs> a company that would, in the States, that would print them on demand. Okay, so if I wanted to add another page, I could get another page. Now, and they're really nice. I have to show you one sometime. Remind me. I'll show you one of our books. We're, we're going we're gonna to do them again, republish them. Um, in our spare time. So, and I, I remember telling, yeah, in our spare time. We just have to get to it. You know, the books are all written. We just have to, we're just so busy. We barely get the stuff out we're doing. But anyway, as we're talking about that, I'm going to add some more light water to this, right? All right, just come on in here like this. We're going to add a little bit of light blue to this water, Okay. And maybe a little bit of ultramarine blue and white, like that. Just kind of lighten up some of this water right in here, back like this. Okay. See that? Yeah. And then what I want to do is do a little tiny, little tiny brush strokes like this. Do -do -do -do. Like that. Something like that. Okay. Little tiny brush strokes. You saw that? Little short ones. Then maybe a little bit of white on them. Little tiny short ones. Like this. Do, 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 do. Okay, so anyway, so I'm telling Jack, I'm going, wow, I like your new book, Jack. Uh, you know, because, I mean, it was expensive. I think it was really, really expensive. I'm going, let's see, um, I paid $5 for mine. You paid ten grand. Yours is really nice, though, i got to <laughs> tell you. <laughs> yeah, you get what you pay for. Well, I'm just saying that, you know, $10,000, $5, no, are both pretty nice. How long ago nice. was that? I mean, think about the technology we have now to print these books on demand. Yeah. Well, they're pretty, pretty impressive. Well, mine was, yeah, they're impressive. So anyway, that was just really funny. Okay, so we're, we put that in there like this. Now we're going to come back under here and do a little a reflection on this tree here like that. These little trees here like this. Okay. Okay, just whoop doop 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 Okay, see that little dark reflections? Isn't that cool? Let's do the same thing over here, like that. Uh, Jeanette would like to know, is the reason why Ginger added the dark under the bushes for balance, or is there another reason? The shadow. It's a little shadow under the bushes. Yeah. That's why I probably got them a little bit, just a little shadow. A shadow. Might have got it a little bit wide, but really it's just a shadow. Kind of a shadow, shadow on the edge of the pond there, like that, right? So now you see what, now I want to show you something about reflections. Let's just talk about that for a second, all right? Oh, here we go. All right, so, yeah, let's just talk about that. I like, <laughs> I like these conversations that we do. All right, so here's some water. Here's a tree. So, all right, so the tree's going to be down like that, right? You guys, and if the water's kind of ripply, it might be a little like that, and you might break it up, but... Basically, and it's usually, generally speaking, it's usually a slightly lighter value or tone than the tree. Now, if you've got a tree, like, and then, like, and here's a fence. And basically, it's the mirror image of this. It's a, it's a mirror. So whatever this is, this is, okay? But if you have a fence that's going like this, people would think that the reflection goes this way, and it doesn't. It jackknifes and does this. And the same with the tree. So if you have it of a tree that's kind of doing this, then the, the reflections begin to kind of doing that. Okay? Makes All right, sense so that's it just, it's, 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 you know, people just don't understand. I'm, uh, you know, that's just what it does. See, and then it's all kind of, see? That's your reflection. And then you just do some clever things and put some stuff over them like this with a little bit of water, and it puts them all underneath. But that's, that's, that's the main thing is that, of course, if you've got a tree going this way, then it's going this way, like that, jackknife. 
straight up and down, or then conversely, if you've got one doing this, then it's the reflection is going to go this way, right? Good to know. Just little pieces of trivia, which is why we kind of did that like that. All right. So right. somebody would probably want to know that. Uh, so I, you can see you see how how this is coming along just really easily. Now let's take a little bit of yellow. How are we doing on time? I want to know how how's I'm doing time to my hour, John. Into your hour, you are. 49 minutes into it. 49 minutes. So I'm getting there. Let's see. Did I put some yellow oxide out? I did not see you do that yet. I didn't. And I had some. I could have sworn I had some. Ah, here it is. A big tube. How could you miss it? <laughs> All right. little yellow oxide. Let's put a little of that color out. It's not in any of the places where it's supposed to go. It's just handy where I need to mix it. All right. Got a little yellow oxide. Now, I'm going to turn this this way while we're talking. So... All right, so we're going to come along here like this. Let's see. Let's just take the rag and wipe most of the paint off the brush. And come back with a little yellow oxide, wipe the paint off. I think my brush was a little damp. And I'm just doing sideways on here, not the whole tree. I want this is the light part of my tree. And I'm going to say that this is the, um, like that, all right, so, that, so there's that. I think I want a little bit of that slightly green, so I'm going to add a little bit of um, yellow, uh, burnt umber to that, so it has like a little bit of a, almost a moss green feeling to it. I'm going to come up here like this, too much paint. Let's say that here's this tree on this side. Same thing on this side. There you go, too much paint. Coming up like that, and uh, two to two. Hey, you got those dice handy? I got those or the dice. die. We have the die handy too. And also, I want to show something in a second. So just give me a second here Absolutely. on that. Absolutely. Yeah, so I'm going to show something. All right, so I've got that. Now I want you to do the same thing while we're all on the same focus of the tree, right? I want you to come here like this and wiggle it like this on your reflections, okay? As long as we're doing that, let's just wiggle these reflections too because we know we're going to put the light over there. All right, like that. See that? Let's wiggle those. And a little bit here too because we have these trees. We're going to say that these trees are in this water too. Right like that. They're just sort of growing, you know. I don't know. It was a photograph. There was a photograph. I didn't make this up. There was a photograph. All right, so uh, and then I want to take a little bit of cad red medium and yellow. And then I'm going to just add a little bit of color to some of this. Let's see. Just a tiny bit of color in these trees. There we go. Just a little bit. All right. So, all right. So that's it. I'm going to do the sa same one the same way. I'm going to let this dry for a minute. I want to show you guys one more thing, okay, Before while we're letting this dry. Um, I finished. I think I told you yesterday that the... Um, the bakery is finished, all right? I wanted to show you that last night, but you may have missed it. This is the new bakery piece that goes to our village collection. And John thinks he'll have these done by when? To release for... Uh, for um, soon. Soon. He says soon. soon. He's shaking his head at me. Well, he's been pushing me to get these done. All right, so what, where this one goes, what this one goes to is our fountain. See there? There goes our fountain. And then we've got, this is our, our holiday series, Village Pieces, where you paint on the sides and everything. And again, we're going to have these released and on our website for download, and a purchase and download. And there's, there's the church, but you, again, you, if you didn't want a church, you could make it a hotel. Hotel, tavern. A tavern, something else. It could be that. It doesn't have to be that. And then here's our gazebo. Kind of running out of room here to show you. I don't know where if I'm out of the side of the camera. No, you're fine. You're fine right there. Right here. Yeah. I'll all right. Can you yeah. see it? There's the. So all right. So we've so that's got. Good. That's going to be the next four. Those <laughs> are the next four. We're going to be releasing you guys. They get the released bakery, in twos. The, the the hotel or church, depending on what you want to do. The fountain park, and the gazebo, which sort of the they're kind of surrounded in the park. These two uh, structures. All right. In the park. So if you hadn't had a chance to paint the villages, these are, you might want to start collecting your 6 by 8 canvases now. And, uh, we, and, of course, we have the Toy Story that's gonna, that, that will be re-released again in November. And I'll try to have two more 
uh, after this, at least. All right. At least two more. We're going to shoot maybe, four. maybe four, but at least two more. Okay. So we wanted to show you that on our website, gingercooklive.gallery. All right. So that's a really fun thing because every year, what I want to do is every year I want to add to that so that you've got this really great holiday village. Okay. So let's do this side. And I'll roll the dice while you can see, while you watch me paint that. I'll roll the dice. We're going to play art trivia. And it's six, John, number six. That's a mystery question. It's a mystery question. I don't do well on those mystery questions. Oh, that's all right. We, we weren't doing real good with the uh, wins last night with the three. No, I was doing really, I just, um, you know, it's amazing. You can take an art history class and not know the answers to any of this. It's extraordinary. But all right, here we go. We're going to come up with a little bit of green here. Go ahead, ask we, your we question. We got a question here. Um, Right, going back to the reflections and things, Wendy is asking, so where the light is coming from, high noon versus early morning or late afternoon does not affect the length of the reflections. Um, yeah, you'd think it would, but I don't think it does. It's, um, it's a mirror. It, it does on shadows for sure, but not on yeah. lakes, I'm pretty sure. I don't it's, see it's, how it it's, can. It's, 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 it's a mirror. It, it's, what, um, it's reflecting back what it sees. Yeah, so if you have a... Like, for instance, if this was a house up here, right? All right. And imagine this is a lake here, okay? It is. It's frozen lake. Yeah, but it, imagine it's all water. All okay. right. Here's my little house like this, right? Here's my little house. So then I've got two fingers here and two fingers here, and then my house is going to be here. Does it you know I mean? It's exactly this far down. So this right. is where the house would be, right? So the house is up here, then that's a finger, and then there's a finger, and then there's the house. Does this make sense? Yeah. It's a mirror. You could almost... If you were drawing an image, for instance, I don't have any tracing paper handy, or I would show you if you're drawing a, I think I do have a piece of tracing paper over here, do I? Hang on. Ah. Just, well, it's not tracing paper, but I mean, it's just an important question, Wendy. I'm glad you're asking it. So, so here's my, my box, right? Here's my lake, right? So then exactly under here is this where this is going to be, okay? So if, if I had a tower, okay, then this is going to be it, right? But if my box, if my house were back here, all right, so then I'd still have, I'd still have this space, right? All right, and then my tower would show up. Without the little so it's lines. almost like you took this and flipped it completely over. In other words, if you weren't sure, if you did it on a piece of tracing paper, you could just fold it where the lake was and then just trace everything. So you see exactly right how your reflection had to be. Kind of cool, right? Okay, here we go. Mystery question. Yes. Number six, mystery question. Complete the title of this famous painting by Edgar Degas. We know Edgar, don't we? He knew our buddy? Yeah, he was the guy that did the ballet dancers and stuff. Okay. The dance lesson, the snow lesson, the difficult lesson. Oh, that's easy. It is now because you gave it away. Well, sorry, but I mean, people have to remember him. <laughs> okay, right? we're going to have to have another number six. Okay, number number six. You guys can go for that one. That's going to be a gimme. Everybody should get a thousand points on this one. Well, so the question is... What's the famous painting title that Edgar Godard, the Goss did? Is it the dance lesson, the snow lesson, the difficult lesson? And we're going back to, is the light source reflecting off the snow? Um, you know, in the photograph, and I can't show you the photograph because I didn't bother to write them. You know, I'm just going to, uh, I'll put this back up on paint my photo and then you can look at the thing. N no, the, the, the shadows were coming straight down in the photograph. And then the other question is... The lights so the coming from this direction. Lights were coming from this direction because um, that's where the highlights on the trees were. Yeah. Now, Manette's asking is, so the shadows are going to be different than the reflections. Absolutely. Yeah. Because those shadows are caused by the light source and the reflections are just that. They're yeah. a reflection. Yeah. So but it's, see, now what you do, okay, so now what you do, and I mean, this is really kind of cool, isn't it, when you think about it, Looks like you take a little purple, I mean, I mean, just one. I want you to see how cool this is. Now what you do is you take a little bit of the, 
the purple here like this and we're just going to say that's where our trees are in the water and uh, to make a little bit of dark dark edge right here on our eyes, a little purple edge and I'll take a little bit of blue and oh, are we all out of white? How did we do that? Man, we had a lot of white out to begin with but we don't have any more now. Okay, so take a little bit of light blue color and I'm just um, I'm just going to go through here like this maybe even add a little bit of this color here. It's almost a turquoise like that and break some of this up like that. Just see how we just sort of put that under the water. Make look at look that. So they just, they just, that's as simple as it gets really when you say that we put that in the water. And uh, Okay, let's go with another question. Everybody that got that right, which is everybody, okay. give yourself a thousand points. A thousand points, all right. I think that's fantastic. Okay, I'm going to give you just one hint. One hint should suffice. The thinker. Da, da, well, what about da, da, the thinker? Da, da. Well, what about it? The question is, just one hint should suffice. The thinker. Well, um, Don't I think, it. are they talking about me, the thinker? Um, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to take. My guess would be the individual that did the thinker. I'm going to take some little bright green leaves now and put them on this little tree right here with the little yellow coming up, coming up here. This, this Yomago one. would like to know why did Degas only paint ballerinas? He didn't. He, he didn't paint just no, ballerinas. He painted all kinds of things. We he, had some other great stuff. We got this. Degas painted all kinds of stuff, and he he he, 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 was a, he loved horses. He painted horses. He did a lot of um, sculpture of ballerinas. He liked women. Uh, for sure, and uh, you know, you got to understand. In those days, uh, you know, I guess you could pay prostitutes to come model for you. It wasn't that easy to get nudes and stuff like that. And you know, but you could be a member of the theater and paint that. And he was very fond of that. But he painted other stuff too. And um, very, but you got to look. If you look at his whole body of work here, yeah, yeah, I think the, you'd be, the you'd be answers surprised. are trying to come in. We have uh, Tanya is saying statue. Peggy says Rodon. Rodin. Carol's Rodin, Michelangelo from Kathleen, Michelle's Toilet. That, that, I like that answer. Me too. Um, I like that. Sylvia has statue. Uh, Yvonne has Rodin. 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 Okay. Rodin. Sue says the thinker is a statue. Rodin, Rodin. R O. Rodin. Yeah. It's R O D I N or A. Rodin. Rodin. Put in because I'm being a copycat. Nice going there, Tanya. Let's think <laughs> on our own people. No cheating. No looking at other people's papers. Well, don't you guys remember Dobie Gillis? That's exactly what Judy wrote. Dobie, Dobie Gillis. Gillis. Don't you remember Dobie Gillis? And he used to he'd sit in front of that statue. Yeah. In the TV show, you got to be old enough to remember that show. And there was Maynard. Maynard. Maynard and Dobie, right? And Dobie just was this teenager that had all these problems, and girls didn't like him, and he didn't understand what he had done to, to, to hack off all these girls. I'm just going to come back here with a little bit of Ms. snow. Miss Valentine says, John, good choice. So uh, I think that's pretty good, John. You know? So what would you like to say it is? That's a statue. Just like I say, it's a Okay, statue. so you stumped the artist once again. It's not a statue. No? It is Rodin. Rodin. R-O-D-I-N. It's the proper spelling. Okay. Well, good for you guys. Good for you that got it. If Let's you got it right, give yourself a thousand points. If you pick my name or Sammy's name, give yourself five hundred points. And those that said Dobie Gillis, I'll give you a thousand for that. And Michelle, the toilet, you get two thousand. <laughs> All right. Now, did you guys see how fast we put this painting in? Now, what we need is a few more branches, and we're done. Now, come on. That's that it. Is just, that's, that's all there is to this. That's all there is to this. And we just need a few more branches. And I'm going to suggest some stuff to you guys. Uh, we're going to talk again the tree rules while we're doing this, right? Because I, and if we, you know, as we kind of say this, here's our tree rules. Now, one of the things you never want to do when you're painting a tree is you don't want to do, you want to have a branch here and then one right opposite like that, like a V or something, right? Branches are whying all the time, Okay. Everything's just, they keep it kind of crooked like cracks in a sidewalk. Think about that. You know, and they get thinner as they go up. If you just really stop to look at it, you don't have to put every branch there ever was in something. But one thing you don't want to do is this. And again, you don't want a tree.
that's going to take your eye right off the canvas like that because that's your eyes just going to go where'd you go all right so basically when you're painting something you've got to think about the easiest picture pattern we're going to talk about a little bit of that so because we got pretty through with this the easiest picture pattern is a triangle or an s so here's your canvas and so basically you want your viewer to come into the picture and kind of stay in it but if you have a line going off like that then whoop they've left now in western society all right People read from left to right and read, read books and so forth. And so people will enter a painting here, and usually you put a tree or something here as a stop, an eye stop, and a few branches to bring them back. It can be color. Now, sometimes you can do something like an S again, but it brings people back, and usually have a stop here to bring people back, that kind of thing. So I prefer, there's a lot of different picture patterns of ways to design pictures, but I prefer either the triangle or an S pattern. And in this painting, we have a little bit of the S pattern. Do you see that kind of coming around here like this? So you see a little bit of an S pattern coming. And, and then we've got the trees. Now, I wanted to just point out to you that for some people, having um, getting very thin lines is tough. One of the things you can do is have a, a, longer, a, a brush with a longer, either very, very fine pointed brush like this. This is one out of Cinnamon's kit. This is a, put my, it's a, a, tw a 12 slash 0 silver ultra mini pointed round sh uh, all right 24 s or you could do you know maybe one like this this is just something i think jerry <laughs> something sold. that's well worn it's well worn but you know stiff as long as it goes to a point and holds a point when you put it in there and you can twirl it and hold a point that'll work and then sometimes you can do a brush oh, i got any over here you can do something with them um, with a really long, long, really long bristles. I don't, I don't know. No, they're, they're around here somewhere. I'll just show you that another night. I don't see them off hand, handy to show you. Here's this one. This, is, this was one. This was a Chinese nail brush, which I really like. Very cheap. It came in a kit on Amazon. Very cheap to do, um, you know, painting on nails. And, now, the trick is get, you know, kind of take a palette knife, right? And you're doing, if you need to do thin branches, you know, put some fresh paint out. Don't try to use your old junk. Put some, put some fresh paint out. Let's see, that would be some, yeah, that would be some, you know, it's like some burn rubber. Put some fresh color out, okay? And put a little water with it. And kind of, you know, you don't, you don't want it to, you know, kind of squish it around like that. So it's like heavy cream, maybe. Okay, like that. There you go. Now... Wet, let's see, where'd that one go? Wet the brush and then pull it to a point like that. Do you see that? And then just put the tip in the brush, kind of roll it, all right? Now, for instance, if I want some tiny little branches, barely touch it, I'm going to come up here like that. I can put some little branches here in like this. Maybe I've got some that are coming off this way. Harder you push on a brush, the fatter the line. So you want to, maybe you need to get you know, fresh, um, see, it's easier for me to go up than it is down because I have a tendency to push, to do lighter, um, uh, lighter, uh, okay, so that's, that's, all right, that's this brush. The question came handles. up, have you, did you use zinc white on the clouds in the background? No, I just used a little water back here, it's a little titanium. bit of water, a little, little more water on the paint. All right, so that's that brush. Let's try this shader one. This is one that was in Cinnamon's kit. We're just... We're doing that. Let's just get some more. Let's get some more little brushes here, like this. Here we go. Oh, that's a nice brush. Now, also, it depends on how smooth your canvas is. If you haven't, if you haven't um, uh, uh, sanded your canvas, then your 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 um, it's going to skip. It's going to want to skip around all the little bumps in the canvas, too. That's the other thing. Okay. I want you to just see that this is how you might. Uh, you know, put some, you know, brush, you know, branches. Maybe I've got a few little, let's see, something a little tinier in here that didn't, this one didn't show up very well. Might make that a little darker. Mary, Mary has a question. Would the painting be too busy to use the S and triangle in the same painting? Or would a painting be? Well, it just depends. It's not that. It's just there is there's sort of a triangular feeling in that this, but it's really, this is more of an S. You just pretty much, there's books you can buy. Um, 
on on just painting design, and that's that's a that's a that's a course. That's a college course, painting design. All right. But these are a couple of ones that you can use. But uh, just you know, your brush direction is everything. I would tell you like that. So that's that's one way. Now the other thing I was going to suggest to you is that these these Posca pens they come in different shades of brown and they're very um, they're very nice and you might want to just I just want to show you for those of you who are having real trouble um, doing some thin lines these work all right you see that I mean this one works uh, so there's nothing you know that's not cheating I think people think that this is some form of cheating and it's not if uh, you've got some different uh, branches and you want to... It's just a different style of brush. It's just a di you've got to think of this as another tool in your repertoire of, of, of paint, all right? So that's, that's what I would say. Just, um, for instance, uh, it's a very easy to come up like this and just do some very thin lines. Uh, something like that, you know, you could do. So you, you've got that option, too, if you want. And then you don't have to put every, if you're looking at a photograph, you do not have to put every um, branch that they had in the picture. You've got to be your own, what would they call a Reader's Digest editor um, when you're doing stuff like that. You know, that would be the one thing. I wish I had my, my tree, I actually have a brush specifically for that, too. Long, skinny brush. For that, I don't Probably see that it. one that Nancy's been asking about. All right, so it, it's very long. It has very long bristles. They use it in watercolor. Right now, here's a really good brand new angle brush. From uh, when the when angle brushes are new, all right, you can get a very thin line. I want you to see that too. So you really get a great thin line when your angle brushes are new. They they are the best. And you can get something so thin. And also, you want to make sure you're taking your trees off the top of the canvas. Make sure that these are going all the way out and on the top. That's real important. So, um, and then what if you get, a, we talked about that yesterday for the cat, for the whiskers. What if you get a branch, what if you get, let's just put a few little more dark pieces back right here. What if you get a, um, a branch that you didn't like? Uh, you've got to erase it right away if you get something that you didn't like. Uh, this is what I would really encourage you to do is erase it right, very quickly. I don't make know sure why you this dry is. Underneath it. It. Yeah, so I'm going to just put a little white on this one. Look at that. See, wherever there's a light, there's a dark. So if your branch isn't showing up, look at that. See the see the little tiny lines. This is why I love these little ruby satin silver angle brushes, because I can get these tiny little lines, just absolutely marvelous line up here like that. Look at that. I mean, I just love that. I mean, you could get it, yes, you could get it with a, um, um, you know, pen too, but I think that's really, that's what I love about these brushes. So that's one of the, you know, probably the qu qu quick thing that we've got on these. So we're looking at that, and I'd say that's our picture, you guys. So we think we're pretty much done. Um, and that's how easy that was to do. And if you want a little bit more clouds, my clouds are back there in the background, but if I wanted to just say that I had a cloud, you know, to bring a cloud forward, which probably would be good to do before you did the trees, but I'm just saying, you could, if, you, if they dried off too soon, if you wanted to bring a cloud forward, you can bring another cloud. You, you can bring a little bit of light up there, and if you're going to do that, then I might bring a little bit of light back down here, too, with the snow. So you just, you know, just sort of balance that out like that. So if we bring that light back down, maybe a little bit of light right in here, a little patch of light might be there. And then maybe I'm going to come back here with a little bit of yellow now. And just on this side of the tree, and look how beautifully this brush will do that, lighten up this tree right here. Because again, when, you're, when your paints dry darker, sometimes you thought you had just the highlight you want, and then you don't have it. So don't be afraid to, look at that, see how pretty that looks? When you just sort of, you know, give a little bit more, you know, emphasis to something. And let's see, well, the last thing we could do is take some pure cad red medium and maybe say that this tree, these little bushes, kind of around this area here, mm, were a little brighter. Fire. What? They're on fire. 
Yeah, well, it, it, they do that sometimes, you yep. know, back in the, you know, and maybe a few in the, you know, we're artists, so we're going to exaggerate something a little bit, maybe just a couple in the little leaves up in here like that, maybe a little yellow, and just brighten up some trees back up in here close to where we are. Okay, let's just say that that's, let's see, let's see, let's just brighten those up. I'll put a little bit of that red with some brown just to tone it down, but brighten up this a little bit deeper not as bright but a little bit deeper red right up in here like that Teresa would like to know would you put shadows on the snow of the trees um well to you me, could it looks like a, a you, you could you could you could you could put for instance you could take some ultramarine blue right we trying to keep this one cookie you guys but you could <laughs> you know you could put some you know ultramarine blue here like that and suggest a shadow from these trees like that, just coming across the snow, like that. I mean, you can do that if you want to. Yeah, These are, you're not going to see them in here because this is the water. So this is why we kept it kind of, kind of simple. But yeah, you can do that. And uh, in, even this way, a little bit, just make that a little darker. See, I think I had it, something kind of dark right here anyway in the original picture. A little bit of darker, something like that around those trees. And then let's see, something a little lighter here in between. Mary would like to thank us for all that we do. Thank you very much, you guys. And I hope you, uh, you, you know, uh, get a chance to check out our, you know, our uh, website. The Ginger, and if you haven't, again, I want to say, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do. Oh, i got other announcements to make. Oh, really? If the sun Comes keeps up shining <laughs> and the creek don't rise, we're going on vacation next week Not on a holiday. holiday. And we have, instead of a live show next week, we've got two awesome, awesome shows for you. We've got a really cool painting. Well, no, no, we can't say because we may not show them yet. Well, oh, I'm just saying, ahead. if we're here, we're going to do something else. If we're not, then we'll do it. We're just going to, you know, <laughs> if we're here next week, we'll have a live show. The reason I say that is because a big storm's coming into Houston. It's supposed to start flooding on Friday, Saturday, and into Sunday. And so that may curtail our vacation plans our holiday plans for the week but that being said next week what we will be having live and we'll we'll put these on not live sorry but they're pre-recorded and they will be available at 8 30 in the morning and give plenty of time to watch them all day um, i've got a really good lesson on how to do uh, mountains and clouds from one of the old dead artists and then on tuesday we're releasing a really amazingly good um, color mixing video really must see 30 minutes but it's packed there's no chit chat it's just it's just pure, just pure getting just down to the get facts get down to the nitty gritty stuff you've always needed to know and didn't realize you did about color mixing and we're going to add that so those will be the two videos we will put up next week then Labor Day I just talked to Daniel Labor Day he has promised to come he's scheduled unless something happens to him um, he's promised to come and do a live show with us on Labor Day. And he's going to be doing palette knife painting. So that will be a, a, a week from... speaking. Again, okay. it depends it, on the weather, storms, and etc. Yeah, all this depends. You know, on when, you, when you do stuff like this, all of this, of course, depends, you know, on your storm. You know, your storm, storm and also watches. And the YouTube gods. And you, yeah, so, you know, that that's, what's, uh, that's what's been planned out, uh, you know, for your week. And we think you guys are really going to like it. Your comments and sharing really help us. And uh, we thank you very much for that. And check out Sammy's new video. When are you putting that up, John? He's going to have to come after we get all your stuff done first. Yeah, so Sammy's video on how to pack will probably be up there next week, too. We think. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to the bear. I'll put it up. I'll post it on our forum, and we'll put it on, on Facebook, too. Yeah, and if you're not a friend, I will friend you on Facebook. It's ginger.cook.92. And I, I tell you, I don't... I don't have a fan page that I really look at. I may start a fan page, but right now I haven't. And if you're not getting friended, if you don't have a picture on your Facebook page, but you don't at least have a photograph, then then you, I probably don't friend you. You know. And if um, I don't suggest. know, I I think somebody wrote my Facebook number on a restroom wall or something because I get some very strange, very very strange. Stuff. Strange males from around the country, single males who are, I don't know what their deal is, but I get a lot of those who, um, John just finds that extremely disturbing. We don't know why these guys show up or how they got my, my uh, you know, 
whatever. But anyway, we're happy to friend you. We, we want to be friends, and we always post things and your stuff that you're doing. So. And also, the other thing we want to mention is you guys should join up the form on our website. Um, if you go to the Join Us page link on the on the menu in the top left corner, say it's, join the form. It's free. When we put, yeah, it's free. And when we post things in the calendar, you get an email immediately that we've done something. If we've changed the schedule. Changed the schedule or going to do a live something, an instant live. Sometimes we do those. And YouTube is notorious for not letting you know. Even though you've signed up for it, they'll let you know after the event, maybe even the next day that we did something. So the form is going to be mainly our main way of communicating. We're trying to get people to use that for the simple reason not everybody likes Facebook. Yeah, we have people that, you know, they're just not Facebook, you know, they're just not Facebook people, which is okay. I'll lighten that tree up a little bit there. All right, hope Judy this was says, fun. Judy says, please send the 92-year-old single males to her in poor health. <laughs> <laughs> Judy, not a problem. Yeah, happy to send it. Uh, again, I uh, can congratulate Judy for winning the original painting. It's on its way to or we'd show you guys. You're going to love that painting. I, I just, really was sad getting rid of that one. I'm going to just come like up here and one. sign this like that, a little... Kind of light, now you there see it's it being signed, so that means we have another 20 minutes to go. No, we're done. So last question before we hang up, and we thank you very much. Last question before we hang up. You know, you don't really get to hang up anymore. You can't slam the phone. <laughs> you can't do anything. Oh, you can press a little button. Where, where's the thrill in that? You know, if this was a real, I don't know, John, if this was a real Texas painting, there'd be a blind up here. That's true. A deer blind up and, here. And deer walking across there. There'd be some deer and some bad. We tried to keep it one cookie, but, you know, you could, <laughs> somebody said, where would I put a deer? Well, they'd fall through the ice here, so I don't know, friends, where you put one. But the deer <laughs> blind up here, I, I could see that, you know what I mean? Just go to, you're saying, well, what do those look like? Well, just go to one of those hunter magazines, and they'll show you a tree like this and what you, the you blind was. You can Google was, that really Like easy. the tree house, right? A little tree house. Yeah. I'm just saying that. And I, I had some little tree branches coming here. I want to put those in while we're talking and saying good night. See, I and told you it would be another 20 minutes. I'm not doing another 20 minutes. I just wanted a little branch in here like that. Don't you love these little... When these ruby satin silver brushes are better than any tiny pointy brush when they're new. I'm telling you. So what you need to do is keep one off to the side. Uh, that's always for just branches. Yeah. Just because you know, they do wear out. It. Paint I it. love those. Yeah. i got to say, I just love those I think I'll do that with the next set. I'm going to paint one... A color to say it's just going to be used for that. It'd be a good way to go. I know. Because that's your go-to brush. But you go through them so quickly. I know. I'm just going to see it here like this. All right. A couple of birds, and I think we're going to fly out of here. Oh, what a segue was that, huh? Well, we're flying out. Don't you think there'd be some <laughs> ducks coming, some birds coming to our... Well, so now we, now the, the hunters have gone to duck season. <laughs> well, it's it early fall. Season. Wouldn't that be ducks? All right. There they are, ready, getting ready to land, right? Like that? There'd be probably a flock of them. Well, you got it's your imagination, not mine. So have fun with this. We gave you the basics of how to do a cool winter fall painting. Good night. Thanks for coming. I can't think of another thing to say. Night, so with John. that, we're going to sign out with our logo and our boys doing our little intro. So we love it so much. Thanks, everyone. Have a good evening, and we'll see you next week, maybe or maybe not. But you'll see something from us. Stay tuned. Thank you. And now, without further ado, I have the distinguished honor and privilege of presenting to you the Queen of Color, the Mother of Artists, globally acclaimed, award-winning Master Acrylic Artist, and the star of our show, Ginger Cook, as she once again mesmerizes her audience with the daring do's and don'ts of painting with acrylics.